mercy and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. How often in our old age do we pay for our youthful indiscretions? As a child, I was exceptionally curious and stubbornly determined. My mother exercised enormous effort in tracking me down, snatching me up, stopping me in the midst of making a poor decision. Once, when I was asked by a woman in the grocery store what my name was, I started slapping my hands and saying, no, no, Mike, no, no. You get the picture. I was always a physically active child and teenager, participating in a host of activities running the gamut of baseball, football, track and field, tennis, golf, and rodeo. I worked in hay fields and on cattle ranches. Injuries were a constant companion. There wasn't a challenge unmet or stunt untried that I wouldn't attempt. And my parents almost had the emergency room of the hospital in town renamed after me, such a frequent patient I tended to be. It was George Bernard Shaw who once wrote, Youth is the most precious thing in life. It is too bad that it has to be wasted on the young. Now in my mid-sixties, I bear both the scars and the daily painful reminders of my younger years. There's the split lip that never healed properly, courtesy of Jackie Smollick hitting me in the mouth with a plastic bowling pin. All the joints on both hands, playing football, doing dumb, death-defying stunts, which have required five hand surgeries to try to repair the damage. There's the sore knee from sports, as well as my days in the Army, as to falls taken later in life. As I said, how often in our old age do we pay for our youthful indiscretions? And what is true physically extends to all aspects of one's life. The bad choice to drink and drive that led to a life in a wheelchair. The failure to study for an important test that got you dropped from the program you were competing to enter. That flirting moment of passion that led you down a totally different road you envisioned ever taking. Sometimes we mess things up in our youth that we pay for with a lifetime of regret. And for so often, and for so many people, such is life. Psalm 119 is the longest psalm in the Bible. It has 176 verses divided into 22 eight-verse sections. Each section is denoted by a letter from the Hebrew alphabet, and every first word of every verse in that section begins with the letter of that section. Now, the entire psalm reiterates a reverence and a respect for God's word. On and on, the author praises God for his holy word, extolling its virtues, calling for the people's faithful adherence to its teachings. As the Old Testament scholar H.C. Leupold comments, the primary emphasis of such lengthy praises of the word must be that the man of God cannot weary and extolling the merits of the word of God. Well, the psalmody for today is taken from Psalm 119, verses 9 through 16, the section entitled Beth, for the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Hear now the word of the Lord. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I will declare the rules of your mouth. In the way of your testimonies I delight as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. So far the word of the Lord. Youthful indiscretions, bad choices, missed opportunities, those are the foibles of youth that we want to blame, right? 
We may appeal to the madness of the moment. I just don't know what got into me. We will offer up a quick, albeit inept, defense. Well, it seemed like a good idea at the time. We may even go on to protest, but everyone else is doing it, only to be met by my mother's words. And if everyone else jumped off a cliff, so would you. And truth be told, yes, I probably would have. At the end of the day, we may begrudgingly acknowledge our mistakes. Upon the reflections of a penitent heart, we know that the bulk of our problems stem from the sin that resides in our hearts and minds. We call it our sinful nature. We're born with it. We live with it. We die because of it. We stand in the back with the tax collector in the temple, at least if we're smart, beating our chest saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. We cannot plead ignorance of the law, for God's word has long portrayed both right and wrong. If with the psalmist I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you, then we are at least aware of the basics, love God, love others, repeat. That split lip from Jackie Smollett, her mother just moments earlier shouted, don't be throwing those bowling pins at each other. You'll wind up with a bloody lip. Duh. That bad knee from the obstacle course? Well, the drill instructor looked at me and said, I wouldn't jump off of that. Yeah, right. The diabetes from eating and drinking things that my doctor warned me about. The choice of the suicide grip on the bull that everyone said would get me hurt, all because I knew better. The fractured neck when I lifted up my head to look for a hole at the line of scrimmage after the coach had repeatedly told me to keep my head down. The pains and the regrets of today are the products of what I did yesterday. Physical, emotional, and spiritual scars are the results of sinful pride, of stubborn self-assurance, of deciding no one else was going to tell me what to do, not even God himself. Now God's word's been there for me, for you, for everyone the whole time. Look again to today's Old Testament reading from Proverbs. Hear my son and accept my words that the years of your life may be many. Why am I just hearing this now? I have taught you the way of wisdom. I have led you in the paths of, of uprightness. When you walk, your step will not be hampered. And if you run, you will not stumble. Keep hold of instruction. Do not let go. Guard her, for she is your life. All of God's word has been written for our, our instruction and our edification. A church word which means building up. And Solomon continues, he says, My son, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and healing to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. God's word is made up of commandments and promises of law and gospel. Both are given to us by God for the sake of our eternal souls. They are life to those who find them and healing to all their flesh. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. And while we cannot undo the ill-conceived choices and subsequent damages to our life up to date, we can give it all to God. Because just as his word is full of commandments and statutes, rules, testimonies, and precepts, it also bears the good news of his mercy, love, and grace that are especially centered upon the gospel of Jesus Christ, crucified for our sins, raised for our salvation. The prophet Isaiah tells us, surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows and yet we considered him to be stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. 
but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Upon the reflections of a life of sin, shame, and guilt, often spurred on by the Bible's condemning verdict, God's word also, and I would submit here, especially reminds us that he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed, as St. Peter writes. While our scars remind us of some of the dumb things we've done in life, the cross reminds us that Jesus has taken us, taken our sins, placed them upon himself, made the salvation that brings to us the salvation of God by his sacrifice. Now, while someone might want to conclude that since Jesus has already died for our sins and been raised for our salvation, we really don't need to worry about sinning, right? Well, Christ's work of redemption, that is, buying us out from under the oppression of sin, death, and hell with his very blood, is not an excuse for not following God's commandments. Paul, in his letter to the Galatians, which, by the way, we're still studying in our Sunday morning Bible class. You're welcome to join us. Spent a lot of time and ink encouraging those early believers not to fall prey to those who encouraged them to seek a salvation by means of their own good works. Salvation is a gift of God. Neither an achievement nor an accomplishment on our parts. For freedom Christ has set us free, he writes. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. But then he goes on to write, as we read in today's epistle, Walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these were opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things that you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit... You're not under the law. And just where does the Spirit live and do His work? But in God's holy word and blessed sacraments. All of which takes us back to this morning's text. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. The lessons we learn are only good when we actually learn from them. You see, those plastic bowling pins had a sharp edge on them. I learned that the hard way with yet another trip to the ER, five stitches, and Doc Johnson commit, commenting, this had to have something to do with a girl, right? Lesson learned. Never got into another one of those bowling pin tosses, and it wasn't the last time I got in trouble because of a girl. That bad bull ride, because I insisted on using that suicide grip, I got myself dragged up and down the arena until finally a couple of the rodeo clowns managed to get me loose. Dislocated shoulder and bruised ribs highly suggested to me maybe I didn't know better, even though I still thought I did. Lesson learned, never did that again. See, at the end of the day, whether God speaks to our hearts to convict us by his law or to comfort us with his gospel, he is always trying to take care of us. Though our sins are always against him, they're harmful to us, physically, emotionally, as well as spiritually. The psalmist knew this, had probably learned it the hard way, as the sinful children of men are prone to do. But with Paul, we can rightly rejoice that the fruit of the Spirit, which of course comes to us through God's Word, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions, 
and desires. The God who gives us His commandments is also the God who grants us forgiveness in Jesus by His grace and His mercy poured out for us upon the cross. And so may our prayer be the words of today's song. With my whole heart I seek you, let me not wander from your commandments. And with my lips I declare all the rules of your mouth. For the sake of God's praise, for the betterment of all our neighbors. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.